Hello everybody again. Uh, my talk will be exactly about, about this problem that was in five emphasized by Carol. This means by how can you measure entanglement uh, by, by taking this idea of a distance to the set of separate state. And I will also talk about another kind of quantum correlation which is called quantum discord, but with the same, with the same ID. And so, um, but I will not take a distance uh, to measure this, but relative entropy. And uh, more precisely, I will take, so uh, this has been proposed many years ago to use a distance or to use the quantum, uh, the quantum generalization of a kullback lightner uh, relative entropy to uh, measure uh, to replace the distance by this uh, relative entropy and to measure this, the distance between a, a, a quantum state and separate state. And I would like to discuss the generalization of this to a more, uh, to a broader family of, of relative entropy, which are Rennie quantum relative entropy. So, um, okay, so this. Um, so the, outline of my talk, I will first introduce this, this quantum relative <coughs> Rennie entropy. Uh, the second part will be very short because fortunately Carol introduced, I think, everything I need. Um, and then I will uh, tell you some, a few results erupting recently on, on this measure of quantum correlation uh, based on this Rennie entropy. So uh, the first slide, uh, I can be very brief. You already know everything from, from the the talk of Carol. So in the, uh, we have a Hilbert space. We have already this, the, the definition is, is, uh, is still on the board for what are state or density matrices. Pure state, you already know about that. You know everything. Uh, recall mixed state is a convex combination of pure states. Uh, I will, uh, my notation for the set of quantum states is not the same as, as that of Carol. I call it EN. And an observable X, so the, the, the dictionary with corresponding with classical is a, a, for a mixed state corresponding to a probability vector, a pure state corresponding to a mass one probability vector, where you have only probability one or zero. And the probability simplex, it was also explained like by this triangle uh, in classical probability and in quantum, uh, in the quantum case, it's a set that Carol explain you the set of all density matrices. Observer correspond to random variable. So um, now if you probably know and um, have heard about the Rennie divergences. If you have two, um, so I will stick to the case uh, of a finite dimensional space. So I have a space of events with n, n, uh, n events, n possible events, the set, uh, probability associated to that. There, uh, there are Classical Rennie entropy or Rennie divergence is defined by this formula. When you take alpha goes to one, you are obtain the celebrated kullback leibniz divergence. So now the problem is what, uh, what is the generalization of this formula to the quantum case? So the um, uh, first thing one can so think about is just to replace this sum by a trace and to take this formula, okay? So, um, so this actually, if you have two commuting states, uh, you can diagonalize them and write uh, P and Q, the set of eigen, the vector of eigenvalue of these two states, and you will obtain that this is exactly, you recover this, this formula. But of course, the interesting uh, thing in, in, uh, in, the, in quantum mechanics is when these two states do not commute. And then we have a dilemma, if you want, because uh, you, you uh, hear this order of operator now matters. And here I, I took this order by analogy with this, but uh, here we have number, we can put it in any order. Here we have operator. We have a choice of order, okay? So um, then actually um, quite recently uh, there was um, uh, a new definition 
different from, I mean, or generalizing this one, which differ from this one just by order, different ordering of operator. So it was, uh, so this is this formula, which looks uh, quite complicated, but it's uh, kind of symmetric in sigma and, and, and rho. So it, it, interestingly, it was first, uh, I first heard about this formula in a, in a completely different field uh, by uh, the school of, uh, of Claude Alain Pillet and, and Yaxic. They are working on out of equilibrium uh, statistical mechanics. And then it was taken over also by, by different people uh, in from quantum information. So there are two parameters, alpha and z. And, and you, of course, if they commute, you recover the classical formula for the Rayney entropy. So um, this, um, this uh, so I will call this this quantum relative Rayney entropy. They have nice property. Uh, the first one is that it's positive. It's, you have equality if only if uh, the two states uh, coincide. Then you have the same uh, thing as you have for, um, Carol explained you about contractive distance. If you take two states, you take uh, an evolution, which is given by this completely positive trespassing map. The distance should decrease. And this is the case for um, this semi-distance. They are not distance. So this is not a distance. But, um, but this is reminiscent from a distance because of this first property. And this is contractive with respect to completely positive trespassing tres map. You have, if you apply a, a, a completely positive map, you decrease. So you, this means you lose some, some information. Uh, you have nice property uh, about monotonicity, monotonicity in alpha. So um, S is uh, non-decreasing in, in Z for fixed alpha. And it's also non-decreasing for al in alpha if you take Z equal alpha. And if, of, if you take, you replace sigma by one, you obtain back the, the Rayney entropy, the usual one, quantum Rayney entropy, which is defined by this formula. Okay? So um, now you have some special case. That's what I, uh, this family, this two-parameter family is quite nice. Uh, if you take alpha equals z, go is to one, you obtain back the, the generalization of the um, callback Leitner uh, divergence, which is called the relative entropy, or sometimes the omega key relative entropy, which is defined by, by, by this uh, trace of rho log of rho minus log of sigma. Now, if you take alpha equals z equal one half, so uh, here the plane, you are here, uh, you obtain back the pure distance that Carol told you briefly about, which is related to the, to the Ullmann fidelity. Okay, by, uh, there is a relation. And this is the definition that Carol told you. Now, if you take alpha equal one half and z equal one, there is another distance which, uh, uh, which is also used a lot in quantum information, which is uh, called the quantum Ellinger distance. So it's this point. So in these three points of the parameter alpha and z, you recover some, some non, non quantities, and some of them are distance. Some or, or other, this, is, this one is not a distance. Okay? So um, now let's go uh, to uh, Bregman, the definition of Bregman divergence. So uh, you, you take, take, consider a convex function from the set of quantum states to real numbers, and uh, consider this quantity. So um, you take, um, here, this gradient is just uh, the, the thing that implements the, the derivative. So um, you have to work uh, for any rho dot in the tangent space, and you make a variation, rho plus t dot rho dot. You take the, the derivative with respect to time, and this defines the gradient. So um, this um, is called Bregman divergence. It's uh, used a lot in, in information theory. And, and in, I mean, for example, in Amari's book, you find that uh, there is a nice duality. You can take the Legendre transform of this. And um, OK, so uh, if you, define, you have some new variable, that here, uh, the dual of a density matrix will be an observable. So I call it x. Uh, there is a relation between x and rho. And uh, if you take the Bregman divergence of the dual, uh, 
it's a, it's a, it's a coincide with the Bregman derivation of the of the of the Legend transform, so k star is related to the Bregman divergence of k up to exchange of rho and sigma. So there is a, a, a nice example. Take k the von Neumann entropy. So it's uh, I forgot to write it, but I think you know s of rho is equal minus rho of rho ln of rho. So the, I take this minus, that's why I, I uh, this is concave, so this is convex with a, with a correct sign. Then uh, you can uh, compute this. So there is a, a paper by Petz that, that does, but the computation is, is, is not so, so complicated. And you find that this Bregman divergence is exactly the, the relative, the usual relative entropy. And uh, there is also, it's also interesting to, to work out what are these legend transforms. The legend transform is uh, free energy defined by, by this formula. Uh, so there is a relation between rho and, and, this, and x. And uh, this was uh, already emphasized by, by Balian collaborators. And, uh, but I think they did not realize that this was uh, quite general in this framework of, of Bergman divergence. Okay. So now the, um, the question is about, uh, so this is a special case of my Rainy relative entropy. Now I have a, a two-parameter family. So are there Bregman divergence? So um, I don't have the solution to this problem, just in a special case. I have a special case which actually I, I found in, in, a, in, a, in a paper by Amari and, and, and C. Chokey. Sicho, Sichotsky. Okay, thank you. So um, this is the case z equal one. Then there is a, a smart change of variable. If you want, you you define r, which is given by alpha minus one rho alpha, and you define k by this formula, uh, and uh, you find at the end. So you can compute also the dual. The dual is related to to uh, to k by just put, changing alpha in one minus alpha. And you find that the divergence associated to k alpha for r s is ex exactly uh, equal to the Rainy entropy for z equal one. So um, the Rainy entropy for z equal one is the first one that I, I show you uh, here. So what I don't know is uh, in the more general case, if z is not equal to one, then you have this uh, different ordering and uh, it, the things are more complicated. And I don't know if there is a, a, a convex function which generates uh, the, which, when you can view this relative uh, entropy as, as Bregman divergence. But maybe you can, you should ask me the question, why do I care about Bregman divergence? So, uh, the, for my purpose, because I want to, uh, I will want to study extremization. So I want, I will define entanglement, for example, as a relative entropy between my state and the closest uh, separate state. I have an extremization problem, and uh, the, I mean, uh, in Amari's book, you find that uh, if you have Bregman divergence. You have a great, uh, great, great tool to make extremization, which uh, is basically a projection theorem. So this pro uh, theorem tells you, so this is my set of, this is, a, I, this is a bad picture for separate state, but you will find afterward that I'm not only interested in extremization with separate state. Uh, it will be another set of states. So, but uh, I want to find the, the distance between R and, uh, and this state. So the closest uh, point in this uh, red set to R. And it is given by projecting by, uh, and so is a, the projection so the, is uh, such that Q minus R should be perpendicular and the perpendicular is with respect to the Hilbert-Schmidt uh, scalar product to the tangent plane of this in the dual coordinate. So uh, this, what, what is not important in this picture 
that you take R minus Q in the usual space and the perpendicular to is with respect to the dual coordinate, so the observable, x minus y, if you want. Okay, so in my, in my case, because I know exactly what the dual is implemented by this, this function, I, so this gives me a method to, uh, to a new method, I think, that was not explored before to uh, study the closest separate state. So this theorem is a consequence of Pythagore's theorem that uh, tell us, so this is Pythagore's theorem for, for Bregman divergence. And the condition is Q, that R and Q, um, is that the dual affine geodesic defined by Armory should be, uh, I mean the affine geodesics connecting R and Q should be perpendicular to the dual geodesic uh, linking Q and S. And then you have a Pythagore theorem. Yes. So this requires some convexity of the set that you project on. Yes. So, so uh, this is why my picture is not very good here. <laughs> uh, so the set of uh, set of the state is m convex, but not uh, m uh, in convex, not necessarily in convex. Uh -huh. uh, so we cannot apply the Pythagorean theorem here. Uh, what? So usually you have the situation you have an exponential family which is e-convex, and you project on it with an m-geodesic, mm -hmm. and the Pythagorean theorem works. Mm -hmm. So now we don't take an exponential family, we take the convex hull of that exponential family, which mm -hmm. is a sp space of uh, several other states. Uh, it's not clear to me that we can uh, apply Pythagorean theorem in this context, because uh, um, the convex hull is not an exponential uh, Mm -hmm. so maybe we, we should discuss this uh, after the talk, but I... So, but thank you for, for this remark. Um, so, um, here, now I switch to uh, separate, separate state and a classically correlated state, and classical state, okay? Um, so, this is my picture of the die of, of, of Carroll. Uh, I take it with coins. So what are quantum correlation? This means that uh, you can send um, a coin to New York and one to another friend in, in Sydney. And uh, if you have perfect quantum correlation between the two coins, this means that you uh, swore with the coin, you will have a random result in New York. And you, my friend swore out the coin in, in Sydney, it will obtain exactly the same result. So this is something that is um, very surprising from our day life, but this is uh, realizing quantum mechanics with spin. You can do it. And uh, the Bell state that was uh, given is not, not, not on the board, but uh, Carol explained you uh, what are the Bell states. They realize exactly this. So uh, this, this is called really quantum correlation. So uh, this is very different from what I, uh, this is an image of classical correlation. So this is like the die that Carol mentioned before. Uh, classical correlation would be uh, just a, a standard ex experiment that you send a, 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 a pair of shoes, one in, uh, one in New York and one in Sydney. Whenever my friend open uh, what he received, he say, oh, I have the, why choose, immediately know that the other will have the left choose. But this is purely classical. There are correlation, but purely classical. This is a picture of quantum correlation, which is, in a sense, much stronger, because the result of this coin is not known before. It's just random. And whenever you have head, here it should be head. But now you have a different kind, uh, so this, I, I make a long story short. You have different kind of, of quantum correlation. One is the entanglement that was explained by Carroll. Another one is called non-classicality, which is more recent. Its uh, first paper on that was in 2001. And uh, it's, it's related to a measure of, of this non-classicality, which is called the quantum discord. Okay, so um, here I can, I think I can uh, go fast. I recall you that uh, for entanglement, uh, the, you consider a biparted system. So the Hilbert space is a tensor product. 
uh, pure state is separable if it's a product state, and, uh, and otherwise it's untangled. A mixed state is separable if there is a pure state decomposition, so, uh, and where all these pure states are separable. So this was explained in detail by, by Karam. So now, uh, what are uh, classical, what I call classical state, which is a bit different than what Carol told you about this uh, sphere and the balloon that's going, because it's classicality with respect to correlation. So I, I still consider a bipartite state, which I call AB. And I will say that the state is, cla yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 It is equivalent. It is the same. Yes. It is exactly the same. Equivalent. Equivalent. Yes. Yes. It's equivalent. Yeah. Uh, other questions. No. So, what are a uh, classical state? There are also convex combination of product state. But the big difference is that I ask now that these states are orthogonal. Here, we do not uh, ask that these states are orthogonal between themselves. Now, I ask that these states, the, the, there is a, a decomposition with orthogonal state, so then this is a, a, of course, this is a spectral decomposition because this is a emission, this is a self-adjoint operator, so it has an orthogonal uh, eigenvectors. So the spectral decomposition itself uh, is uh, involve only product state. Uh, you, you may have mixed state, which can be written like this, but nevertheless you can write the spectral decomposition and they will not be product state. Okay, so this, this is a, a very big difference. So uh, what is the idea behind is that um, not only Entanglement is a, a specific feature of quantum mechanics, but also non-orthogonality of state. If you have a state uh, like on the Bloch sphere that was uh, shown by by uh, by Carroll, so orthogonal states there will be this zero and one, okay? But anyway, so you, I, I should maybe. I don't have the ball of that. I will. This, is, this was the Bloch sphere that Carol showed you. You have zero and one, and he showed you that there was this plus which was here. This plus is not orthogonal to zero and to one, okay? So the fact that you can use this combine, make a, make a mixture of such state uh, is already something that is non-classical because these two states are non-orthogonal. So what I call classical is when I do not allow to make any convex combination of states which are not orthogonal between themselves. So this is a cartoon of, uh, of, um, of the set of all states. So uh, the cartoon is a bit complicated, but let's concentrate to, to the that violet thing. Um, so I define the set of all classical states. So uh, related to your question, this set is not convex now. Okay, so, um, but the convex hull of this set is the set of separate states. So this is a gray uh, rectangle here. And uh, so the, the, the thing is that physicists got rid um, with in, in the last 10 years is that there are some tasks that are impossible to do classically that can be realized by points which are like, for example, a point here. This point is separable, but it's not classical, okay? And nevertheless, uh, because for, for long, physicists thought that to do something that uh, uh, cl classically, processing of information that cannot be classical, requires some entanglement. And this is not true. You can use separate state without any entanglement, uh, but which are not classical, and they, they gave an advantage of a classical uh, information processing. So you can do very interesting things like quantum cryptography. There are even some algorithms that people believe that uh, have almost no entanglement, 
but class, cl uh, quantum correlation, that means that they are, they do not, uh, they are outside the set of classical state, the violated state. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, yes, but um, is, I mean, there are, uh, you have to complete, so this is a, a, a bit an abuse of notation, you have to complete, uh, then you will have a, a sum which is up to the lowest dimension, okay? Oh. And then you have to complete to obtain some basis. So I, I was a bit uh, sloppy with notation, you are perfectly right. So this is the sum is up the, to the highest dimension. <coughs> Um, there is another thing that such state, like the one here, they are uh, typically easier to produce because as Carol explained you, uh, when you have entanglement, maximally entangled states are, are very fragile because of noise and they will, the entanglement will disappear. So it's believed that states which are separable but quantum correlated, not of this form, so here, they are more robust. So uh, now I'm go to uh, measure of entanglement. So I will take a measure of quantum discord. So I, I define, so I recall you this in violet, this is a set of classical state, which are included in the set of separate state, which are the gray rectangle. And um, I will measure entanglement by the minimal distance between rho, the, my state, and a separate state. And I can do the same with, with uh, what I call the discord, which will be the uh, so, uh, distance, so now I will comment on that afterwards, uh, between rho and a classical state. So here there is no, uh, this picture should be with the violet here. So this was proposed a long time ago, and it was also proposed that instead of taking a distance, one could take the, okay, one could take the relative entropy. And so um, now I want to take the generalized uh, Rennie entropy, Rennie relative entropy. And I went, would like to show that uh, this, this has a very, um, so, it, it, so uh, this is a, a very, there are specific result when, by using that, that gen generalized pre previous result. So um, what are the property of this? So this first, um, because, um, I mean, let me record you the property of the, of the relative entropy. Uh, you have this separation of point. You have equality if only if the state of equality. The, 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 uh, the relative entropy is zero if only if, only if sorry, the state are equal. So uh, this means, um, this implies that uh, the distance is zero if only if rho is separable. Or uh, for the discord, the, the discord is zero if only if rho is classic. So now um, you have something which uh, is important in, for any entanglement measure, is that um, you should be non-increasing under some specific uh, transformation, specific uh, quantum operation, which are called local operation classical communication. And uh, this is true for, for my entanglement measure, provided that I am in a range of parameter where I have this monotone, the contractivity that I told you about. So contract, if I take a completely positive trespassing map, the entropy between two states should decrease. So this is true in this region of parameter. Here it's extending to infinity, so in, the, in the green region. So in this region of parameter, as a consequence, uh, E alpha is non-increasing under local operation classical cooperation and classical communication, or it's also convex. And as a, as a byproduct, this means that this is a good entanglement measure. Then you have also uh, invariance of of both e entanglement and discord and the local unitary transformation. And, and the interesting thing is that but the consequence of the monotonicity of this, of this Rennie entropy is the monotonicity of my measure of entanglement and discord. So in this uh, picture, if you go, you fix 
uh, you fix alpha and you increase z, the measure will, uh, the qu this quantity will increase. And if you take alpha equals z, so you are in the diagonal, then it increases with alpha. So, and I will call you that um, because the, the entropy are, are, relate, are related to the Bure distance or to the relative, usual relative entropy or to the Ellinger distance, this uh, property are very nice because they allow to connect some non measure of entanglement between themselves by studying this whole fa two parameter family. So I think um, my time is, is almost over, so I want to give you uh, in two slides my, the, the main result. Um, the first one, uh, study this measure for pure state. And uh, what's something which is nice happen is that uh, the entanglement for pure state is equal to the discord. And this is also given by the uh, Rainy entropy, the usual Rainy entropy, for the radius state. So, and the coefficient of r is given by, by this formula. So, what, what does this formula mean? Uh, it means that uh, entanglement is equal to discord for pure state. And this is something one should expect because uh, uh, if you have a classical state, so at this I, I came very. Uh, I was uh, too, maybe too quick on this. Uh, classical, classical state, I explain you, are, are given like this. But if the sum is reduced to one term, it's the same as saying it's, it's separable. It's a product state. So a pure classical state is a product state. This is the same as a separable state. So for pure state, classical and, and uh, separable is the same. So it's natural to have, if you have a measure of discord and measure of entanglement, they should coincide for pure state. And this is the, the case for this measure. And um, the other interpretation of that is that, um, I mean, in my picture, pure state, as Carol explained, you are external points. So this would be a pure state. So, and, so the picture is, is, is correct in the sense that if I look for the closest separable state to a pure state, so a, a pure state should be also in the boundary, take for example this one, the closest uh, separable state is also a classical state. So you are as close to the rectangle as to the uh, violet region. And, um, and as a byproduct also, this means uh, that d alpha z is a, is a good, if we restrict it to pure state, is a good entanglement measure, and actually I think this measure was studied by Carol some time ago, and I could not, um, I had not the paper with myself, I don't know in which year, but it's always a paper of Carol on, on this state defined, entanglement measure defined by this formula. So um, now, maybe I have two minutes, or? Okay. Uh, uh, there is a, re a nice relation between quantum discord and, and entanglement, which were uh, put forward by, by these authors. So now I have to go a little bit about quantum measurement that was not explained by Carol, but very briefly, if you take, um, you, you do a measurement on the system, you must couple the system to a measurement apparatus. So the measurement apparatus is, is made of a, what I call a pointer, which would give you the result of the measurement. And there is a bus to produce the equivalent. So what is the effect if you ignore the decoherence effect to, due to the bath uh, of this coupling with the pointer. If you have a, a U system in, in, in the density matrix row AB, I take the pointer in a pure state for simplicity. Uh, um, and then I, um, the evolution, this is a unitary evolution which uh, due to the interaction with the pointer produces typically such a state uh, so this is a state where you, you see that um, there are some of uh, all superposition or convex, but uh, when you have phi k, which is phi k is called the measurement basis, it's the basis of, the, uh, of AB, and whenever you have phi k, you have pk for the point. Okay? So there is a kind of correlation between uh, an eigenstate 
uh, of the system and uh, a, uh, um, a state of the point, which means, for example, if you have a spin, if I have a zero, the state zero, for example, my pointer is on the left. And if I have one, cat one, the pointer would be on the right. So this is a typically uh, the effect of interaction with the point. And now uh, one can study entanglement between m my bipartite system and the point. And so I can measure this entanglement of this state after the coupling with the pointer and minimize over all measurements which I can do on the system. But importantly, I do only consider local measurements. That means that the, the phi k, the basis where I will measure, are product, product basis. Between, this is a, uh, a basis for A and this is a basis for B. And then I minimize over all this. And um, these people uh, told in some example, different from this one, that uh, this is related to this call. And this is exactly what happened for this measure that I introduced to you. Uh, if I measure entanglement with the Rainy entropy uh, and I minimize over this, I obtain exactly the discord. So this is a nice feature of, of these things. And uh, by using this theorem, I can get the previous theorem because uh, there is a relation, there is an inequality between this and the entanglement of row AB. OK, I think it's time to conclude. Uh, so um, my, the take home message is that uh, you can, so a way to define entanglement and discord uh, using this distance which, with not, uh, not a true distance, but a relative linear entropy. Um, they are not uh, completely satis satisfactory because uh, they are not too distant. So I, I think it would be worth uh, substituting this relative entropy by the associated Riemannian distance, but this is more complicated. But if you take relative entropy, uh, you obtain a two-parameter family which contain uh, at least three well studied measures of quantum correlation, which the name are given here. So, but there are many papers on this quantum correlation, and they are linked them within. So, they, they are contained in this two-parameter family, and very importantly, this monotonicity. So, you have you will have some inequality between them that are not all, all known by because of this monotonicity property. And then uh, the nice feature is that for pure state, the discord and entanglement coincide, and the discord I showed you in the last slide. Is, uh, can be interpreted as a minimal entanglement between the system and pointer in local motion. So thank you for your attention. All right, thank you, Dominique. Uh, sorry, can you go back to the definition of E? Of? of the entanglement measure. Uh -huh. This one. <clears throat> OK, and because I want to know now how this relates to the problem Carol like described at the end. So, so if you have like an, an, an arbitrary state and you want to decide if it's separable. So, it's the same. So, so yeah, because you, you, sh you show that it's separable if and only if this is zero. So this is also like a very a difficult problem to solve. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay, that's the, that's this the idea. Only, only as Carol told you, uh, this set can be characterized uh, for two qubits or qubit and a qtrit, but not for more. So this is a big uh, difference with the uh, second definition, where you take classical state, and classical state uh, are much more easy. Uh, you, in any dimension, you can say a lot about what are the classical state. But the set is not convex, so optimization it's not convex. is not difficult. Yes. No, but, but you hope that through these kind of things, you can solve this problem, I, I mean, so yeah. in, in, some, in some case, but um, basically, so I, I did, comp not with this, but for the pure distance, for example, I have explicit formula, but it's for two qubits. OK. A, a short comment. Usually, you don't solve the problem that's very difficult, but you find another problem you can solve. This is the standard strategy. 